Okay, so welcome again to this Wednesday webinar where we're looking at identifying fake student learning outcomes and writing measurable ones instead. So providing our learners with clear and measurable learning outcomes helps ensure their success, and it also helps us meet quality online course standards outlined by the Quality Matters rubric, which ISU does subscribe to, and the ITRC Quality Plus program team helps faculty implement. So Quality Matters is an internationally recognized faculty-centric nonprofit that includes both a rubric and a peer review process designed to certify the quality of online course design. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sasha Johnson, and I'm a senior instructional designer here at the ITRC. And with me today are some of our Quality Plus team members, Kim Tompkinson and Ryan Randall, and our program our Quality Plus program manager, Lisa Kidder, and we also have Rick Feller, who is also at the ITRC. So during this presentation, I am going to ask you to participate using the Zoom chat or the annotation tools. So let's just take a second to find them. I think most of us are pretty familiar with the chat function since we're probably all Zoom fatigued. But in Zoom, there's also the annotation tools. So when you're viewing a shared screen, you can select the view options and then choose annotate. And you can insert lines and arrows and shapes using the draw tool, and you can insert predefined icons such as check marks, stars, and hearts using the stamp tool. So please either use the chat or annotation tool now to indicate your role so we can get a better feel for what you do here at ISU. There's an instructional designer, I knew that, but other, huh? Both, <laughs> all of the above. So it looks like we have lots of instructional designers with us today and people who are in between. International faculty and scholars advisor, okay, great. And faculty in the chat. So I appreciate you letting us know a little bit about you. So just to lay a little bit of foundation, we do use the term outcomes here at Idaho State University at the course and module levels, and I'm pretty sure at program level levels and accreditation levels too, they may use the word outcomes, whether you use the term objectives or outcomes, we tend to use outcomes in the ITRC. And these are also tied to the characteristics of these outcomes are tied to the quality matters specific review standards and general standard two. So outcomes should be specific and measurable, and that is tied to specific review standards 2.1 and 2.2. They should also be student focused, describing student actions and achievements, as well as clearly stated, and those both tie to specific review standard 2.3. They should also be cognitively appropriate for the level of the course and the level of the students, and that ties into specific review standard 2.5. And this last characteristic has been extremely helpful for outcomes at the course level, which should describe student actions and achievements that have value outside of the course. So another way to say this would be, how are your students going to describe this skill on their resume? So a few years ago, I attended a presentation called Helping Subject Matter Experts, also called SMEs, Avoid Fake Learning Outcomes, and you as faculty are the experts on your subjects. So during that presentation, Blair Goodland from Manhattan College had explained that many learning outcomes are fake because they're actually written as topics, resources, activities, or assessments. So in discussing this with the instructional design team here at Idaho State, we further categorized topics and resources as being content-based and activities and assessments as items learners do to practice and then demonstrate mastery of that content. So we can also kind of look at these as topics and resources as knowledge, and activities and assessments can be thought of as skills. However, the key here is that when we write these outcomes as topics, resources, activities, and assessments, they're not really written in measurable terms, and we can therefore consider them fake. So now comes the point where I want you to have some fun, and I'm going to present you with some student learning outcomes to classify in these topics, resources, activities, and assessments. And you can use your annotation tools or you can use the chat function as well. So first up, let's look at this one. Someone says at the end of this unit, students will be able to understand concepts from lectures and lab handouts. How would you classify this outcome? Is it a topic or a resource, an activity or an assessment? You can use your annotation tools or throw it in the chat. 
no one wants to be the first to put themselves out there. Well, we've got someone who says it's a topic. Anyone else? Activity. Well, I know our time is short, so I'm going to go ahead and say what I classified this as. And I said lectures and lab handouts are resources that the instructor provides to the learners. So what's covered in these resources? What should students be able to do after attending to these resources? These are the kinds of questions we have to ask ourselves when we write something like this. Next up, explore the anatomy of the brain. What do people think of this? Activity, resource, topic, assessment? Got some activities coming up. Topics coming up, activity coming up in the chat, looks like. Okay. So I'm going to say I classified this as an activity. Exploring is really something that the students are going to do. And is there a clear way to measure whether students have explored the anatomy of the brain? So think about what it is students will be able to do after they've explored the anatomy. Is it that they will be able to label specific parts of the brain or categorize where certain functions happen within the brain? Next up, obtain an understanding of the basic principles, concepts, and theories that comprise the discipline of psychology. What do we think? Topic, resource, activity? Got lots, okay, we got somebody saying topic. Topic coming in in the chat. Okay, topic because it's not measurable. I like that. And we've got topic up here. Lots of people saying topic. Okay, so I'm going to clear the drawings and say I also classified this as a topic. So psychology is a broad topic. So to drill down to the true outcome here, again, ask ourselves, what do we want students to be able to do with their understanding of these principles, concepts, and theories? Is it something that we're expecting them to be able to discuss behavioral psychology, maybe identify main principles of behavioral psychology, or explain behaviorist, humanistic, or cognitive theories? There are a multitude of outcomes that are measurable that could come into this topic, right? Past the chapter 14 quiz. What do you think? Assessment. Okay, I like it. We're getting lots of assessments coming in. So I'm gonna say I also classified that as an assessment. A quiz is a type of assessment rather than an outcome. Granted, quizzes can also be used for practice activities, but we wanna think about what students are demonstrating here. What is the quiz evaluating? In this case, we don't really know what chapter 14 even covers, but maybe it's something where students are identifying basic sentence structures or recognizing specific sentence types, something like that. It's going to be you could say it's an activity as well, Anne. I like that you brought that up because we're going to talk about that. It did not identify what the content of the quiz was. Exactly. And I think of it more as the chapter quiz being an assessment, but it could also be a practice activity. It could be a formative assessment or it could be a summative assessment where it's a quiz. I'm going to guess it's probably a formative assessment. So something students are doing to practice and get feedback. So then... Create midterm research posters providing historical analysis to demonstrate basic research and citation skills. What do we think? I think coming up on the annotations yet. I'm watching the chat. Activity, assessment, mm -hmm. resources. I'm liking this. Getting lots of different answers. Look, I said this is an activity and an assessment, right? This is written more of, I would say, a focus on the activity and assessment. So create a midterm research poster. That's going to be probably an assessment. The poster is an activity and creating the poster is an activity, whereas the poster itself is going to demonstrate what the learners learned, right? So the learning outcome seems to be buried in here and historical analysis is kind of part of it and basic research and citation skills. So maybe this could be tweaked to be more measurable by analyze a historical event or demonstrate basic research and citation skills. In fact, this research poster could be meeting both of those outcomes, right? So students are analyzing an historical, a historical event and they're also demonstrating basic research and citation skills in that project. One more, read chapter 12, Manifest Destiny. And then there's one in resource, activity is coming up. 
resource activity coming up in the chat. Okay. I said this is written less as a measurable outcome and more as a thing to do. Manifest destiny is a topic. The textbook chapter 12 is a resource and reading is an activity. So what do we want students to demonstrate here? What are they going to get after having read chapter 12, Manifest Destiny? Are they gonna be able to explain the beliefs that grounded Manifest Destiny or maybe paraphrase events that occurred as a result of Manifest Destiny? Again, read chapter 12, Manifest Destiny fits in multiple boxes, right? So it's messy, obviously it's messy. And sometimes these outcomes can fit into more than one fake box but the awareness can help you write more measurable learning outcomes, right? So to recap, as you're writing learning outcomes, we wanna think about what do I want students to be able to do with this information? What will students take from this into a job context? And this will help students learn to do what? So with the resource you're giving them, what is this helping students be able to do or accomplish? And what will students be able to accomplish with this knowledge or understanding that they're coming away from this module or from this course with? So moving this into practice by having this awareness about fake learning outcomes, we can actually revise them. So we can look at what we're actually having the students do and see where, where we can make those more specific and measurable. We can also incorporate backwards design. If you already have signature assessments or practice activities for students to do, you can look at those existing activities and, and see what students are actually doing or demonstrating and then write the learning outcomes based on that. And once you've written those measurable outcomes, you can then select resources and practice activities to support the learner's ability to meet those outcomes if you're not using the backward design approach. And we refer to that as alignment in the Quality Plus program, as well as Quality Matters rubric, which you can learn about in our Quality Plus program at ISU. So with this program, we are we have designed this, Elisa Kidder has designed this program with the aim of increasing faculty knowledge, skills, and abilities in online teaching, as well as the skills and abilities in developing online courses and ultimately creating quality online courses at ISU. So you can call us and visit us on our website for more information about the program. Well, with that, I did wanna say, we also have a variety of resources available for help with course design and with Moodle ISU. So you can use the QR code that's on the screen to get a selectable slide like this if you wanted to select those links. And I'll also throw in the chat a link to this slide that has selectable links. The Tiger Tracks Knowledge Base is a library of how-to articles at your fingertips. So those are available 24-7, 365 days a year. We also have a library of videos and recordings similar to this one in our ITRC video library. And you're definitely welcome to meet with us at the ITRC and you can email us at itrc at isu.edu or call us, our extension is 5880. And we are located in the basement of the Oboler Library, room B17. And you're always welcome to drop in during business hours. We have a front lab that is a drop-in lab for support. And that's where Rick, who joined us earlier. Oh no, he's still here, okay. Rick is our, our front desk manager. So he is available to help along with our student employees. We also, want you to watch for future Wednesday webinars. You can always give us suggestions on webinars you would like to see. And we put those announcements in Idaho State today, as well as the ISU events calendar. And again, I know your time is valuable, so I don't wanna keep you too long, but if you do have more questions or wanna explore this further, feel free to reach out to me, Lisa, or any of us here at the ITRC, and we'd be happy to. And don't forget, the Quality Plus program, you can enroll in that. It is professional development for U.S. faculty to develop online courses that are that meet the Quality Matters essential standards. 